There's a river of life flowing out from me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, sets the captives free. There's a river of life flowing out from me. Rise up, oh well. Dig up, oh well. Pour out, oh well. And give to me. Rise up, oh Christian. And say to me, rise up, oh well. And give to me that life abundantly. Oh yes, that life abundantly. On this second day, abundantly. Yes, oh river of life flowing out from you, flowing out from me. Let's let it flow out to all who are around us, right? On this October 2nd, welcome to the reading of the Word of God. The reading of the Word of God will be read this morning from Isaiah, Yermiyahu, chapter 66, and we're going to finish it up today. We're going to finish up this fabulous fabulous prophet who brought forth words for every generation. Isn't that magnificent? That's when you know it's from God. Every generation. So let's begin in Isaiah 66, this great read. Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build for me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things my hand has made, the Lord says. My hand is made. And all those things exist, says the Lord, but on this one I will look. And here's who he's going to look on. On him who is poor and of a contrite heart and who trembles at my word. He who kills a bull as if he slays a man. He who sacrifices a lamb as if he breaks a dog's neck. This, th these are serious words. He who offers a grain offering as if he offers swine's blood. He who burns incense as if he blesses an idol. Just as they have chosen their own ways. And boy, that, that remains the, the big definition of sin. Each has gone his own way. Just as they have chosen their own ways and their soul delights in their abominations, so will I choose their delusions and bring their fears on them, because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes, and they chose that in which I do not delight. Hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word. Your brethren who hated you, who cast you out for my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified, that we may see your joy. But they were ashamed. The sound of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, the voice of the Lord, who fully repays his enemies. Before she was in labor, she gave birth. Before her pain came, she delivered a male child. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? I haven't. I've never known a lady that didn't go through birth pangs to bring forth the baby. Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day? And we can liken that unto Israel. Oh, yes. In one day, May 14th. 1948, born, the country born 
in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? Israel was, wasn't it? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. Shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery, says the Lord? Shall I who cause delivery shut up the womb, says the Lord? Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad with her. All you who love her, rejoice for joy with her, all you who mourn for her, that you may feed and be satisfied with the consolation of her bosom, that you may drink deeply and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river. When peace like a river. We could go sing that one, couldn't we? And the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. And then you shall feed. On her sides shall you be carried and be dandled on her knees as one whom his mother comforts. So I will comfort you, and you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. When you see this, your hearts shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like grass. The hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants, and his indignation to his enemies. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword, the Lord will judge all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves to go to the gardens after an idol in the midst, eating swine's flesh, pork chop dinner, and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, says the Lord. Just think about that statement, that little paragraph. That needs to be read again by you out loud when you have concentrated time that you can give to it. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall be that I will gather all nations and tongues and they shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them and those among them who escape, I will send to the nations to Tarshish, and Pool and Lud, who draw the bow, and Tubal, and Yevon, to the coastlands afar off, who have not heard my fame, nor seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles, <clears throat> and then they shall bring all your brethren for an offering to the Lord out of all nations. Ooh, I mean, isn't that what we've seen? People from every nation have flocked to Israel. <coughs> this happened back then on horses and in chariots and in litters, on mules and on camels to my holy mountain, Jerusalem, says the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me this morning. As the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord, and I will also take some of them for priests and Levites, says the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your descendants and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, 
and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, <clears throat> says the Lord. And they shall go forth and look upon the corpses of the men who have transgressed against me. Against me. <clears throat> How about that sweeping statement? Let me read it again. And they shall go forth and look upon the corpses of the men who have transgressed against me, for their worm does not die, and their fire is not quenched. They shall be an abhorrence to all flesh. That's a serious word, abhorrence. Wow. <clears throat> And that, my dear friends, is where Isaiah finished. Tomorrow, we will begin the exciting prophetic book from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah. But right now, let's move on to the New Testament, to Philippians. And we are in Philippians chapter 3. We read just one, the first verse yesterday, if you remember. We will pick up with verse 2. Philippians chapter 3, verse 2. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the mutilation, for we are the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I also might have confidence, Paul says, in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. And then he gives his credentials of his life. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Concerning the law, Paul was a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church. Concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. For what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish. Paul's not regretting any of that. Count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him. That's what we want, isn't it? Our soul longs to personally know the Lord, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings. Oh, mm, is that what you want? But that's part of it. <clears throat> Along with that, the world, the world will give you some sufferings. Being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on. And my, my dear adopted son, John Lodino, used to say, Kai Kai, Kai Kai, press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching 
forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, such an encouraging sentence. <clears throat> My dear Sister Kay, heart surgery over, she says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah that it's over. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for correcting what was the problem for Kay. Mm, we're going to stop right in the middle. <clears throat> and we're going to praise you, Jesus, for taking care of our sister. We have we sent the prayers up to you. And Lord, you have performed the healing. We claim it. We claim it. Healing, it, surgery is over. <laughs> Those are beautiful words, my dear sister Kay. And here you are watching us. Awesome. We will continue <clears throat> to pray now for everything that was operated on to heal up very nicely, sister. We love you. We love you. We are, yes, yes, Melissa says, grateful to God. I am very grateful to God to hear this. Hallelujah. Wow, I can hardly get back to the word. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. I will pick up with verse 13, uh, 15, okay? <laughs> verse 15, look at there, Kay. Everybody's excited to hear that it's over for you. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind, brethren. <clears throat> Join in following my example and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now I tell you even weeping, Paul says, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly. Oh, I tell you what, that is our worst downfall, is food. And whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed <clears throat> to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Mm -mm -mm. Mel is rejoicing. Sharon is rejoicing. Kay, we are all rejoicing for you, my sister. We are rejoicing for you. <clears throat> All right, we move right along to Psalm 74. And this is a contemplation of Asaph. Oh, my whole being wants to meet this man in heaven one day. Oh God, why have you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your congregation, which you have purchased of old, the tribe of your inheritance, which you have redeemed, this Mount Zion, where you have dwelt. He dwelt there, didn't he? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Lift up your feet to the perpetual desolations. The enemy has damaged everything in the sanctuary. Your enemies roar in the midst of your meeting place. 
They set up their banners for signs. They seem like men who lift up axes among the thick trees. And now they break down its carved work all at once with axes and hammers. They have set fire to your sanctuary. Oh, those people, it, they just, I bet they never felt right again after watching that. They have defiled the dwelling place of your name to the ground. They said in their hearts, let us destroy them altogether. They have burned up all the meeting places of God in the land. We do not see our signs. <clears throat> there is no longer any prophet, nor is there any among us who knows how long. Oh God, how long will the adversary reproach? Will the enemy blaspheme your name forever? Why do you withdraw your hand, even your right hand? Take it out of your bosom and destroy them. For God is my king from of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. You divided the sea by your strength. You broke the heads of the sea serpents in the waters. You broke the heads of Leviathan in pieces and gave him as food to the people. More head than one. Ugh. I don't even want to look on such a scene, do you? <clears throat> you gave him as food to the people inhabiting the wilderness. You broke open the fountain and the flood. You dried up many rivers. The day is yours. The night also is yours. You have prepared the light and the sun. And I'm watching sunrise right behind me. You have set all the borders of the earth. You have made summer and winter. Remember this, that the enemy has reproached, O oh Lord, and that a foolish people has blasphemed your name. Oh, do not deliver the life of your turtle dove to the wild beast. Do not forget the life of your poor forever. Have respect to the covenant, for the dark places of the earth are full of the haunts of cruelty. Oh, do not let the oppressed return ashamed. Let the poor and needy praise your name. Arise, O oh God, plead your own cause. Remember how the foolish man reproaches you daily. Do not forget the voice of your enemies. The tumult of those who rise up against you increases continually. And we are seeing a replay of all that was just read in Psalm 74, aren't we? Birth pangs again for the second coming of our precious Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm excited about it. It's hard. It's never fun to have the birth pangs. And I, I've just watched that in my own family, as you know. My dear grandson and his precious wife, my granddaughter now, bringing forth this first beautiful baby. Did you see the picture of my baby on my site? <laughs> little Genevieve, little Ginny, we're calling her, little Ginny. She is adorable. <clears throat> All right, Jane, get back to the word. <laughs> we wrap up today's reading, my precious, precious brothers and sisters, with Proverbs chapter 24, Verses 15 and 16. <clears throat> Proverbs 24, 15 and 16. Do not lie in wait, 
O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Do not plunder his resting place, for a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again, but the wicked shall fall by calamity. Their fall is going to be very unpleasant. They will fall by calamity. But a righteous man might even fall seven times, but he rises up again. That's the difference. And so it is our desire today <clears throat> to continue a life of righteousness, isn't it? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Well, <clears throat> let's close in prayer on this beautiful worship day. And I encourage you, please, go to church. Go to church. Just go. Go by faith. There's no perfect church. Mine is really not perfect because I walk in the door. But so do my other brothers and sisters. Let's keep the church stronger and stronger and stronger. Let's bring our tithes. Let's volunteer <clears throat> to help with something, something that you feel like you know how to do or, or maybe you're just interested in, you'd like to learn to do it. Let's support the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right, let's pray. Father God, <clears throat> I want to thank you for this wonderful word today. Wonderful, uplifting word. Warnings in it, but encouragement in it. Bold statements of truth in it. You have blessed us, Lord. You have blessed us. And we are very grateful this morning to hear this good news of our sister. That, that heart condition hung over her long enough. And now, Lord, we pray for Kay that she will regain strength, that she will build herself back up and be stronger than ever. Have filled days with joy, without pain, without the trouble of a heart that's not acting right. <clears throat> Precious God, we ask that you watch over her. And Father, we ask that you watch over Jerusalem. Jerusalem the golden filled with milk and honey. Father God, we thank you that your people are back in your land. More coming all the time. We bless you for this, Lord. We thank you that the pictures today show a bustling, busy Israel. A bustling, busy Jerusalem. Good crops, Wonderful things in the marketplaces. <clears throat> People protected by your hand. A marvelous nation where every single citizen is militarily trained for two years. Everyone. Wow. That's a magnificent accomplishment. And we bless you for that, Lord. Father God, here at home, Many are <clears throat> staring at houses that were destroyed completely. Lord, <clears throat> people wondering still, what, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? Father God, I'd ask that you'd cause neighbors all over Florida, all over up the coast where this terrible storm hit, to reach out to each other, to love and to pray, <clears throat> to bring a meal, to come and, and help, even just with the massive amounts of uh, leaves and limbs and all from trees that were just broken off. And we just, we have it everywhere. 
there's a massive cleanup going on. Father, <clears throat> I'm going to pray for the insurance companies also. Their biggest, biggest time to work and to help people and to answer claims and to check them out and to, to see that people get taken care of who faithfully paid for their insurance for years. Father God, be with all of these insurance employees that they can handle the amount of work handed to them. <clears throat> Father, the businesses that were destroyed, the homes that were washed away, the people, <clears throat> Lord, who, who are still fighting off fear, who, who were just, they weren't sure they were not seeing the last day of their own life. Precious God, and we do have a toll, a, a toll, a number of lives that were lost in this tragedy. Father God, please, please, we'd ask that many would reach out to them on this day. Reach out to them. Father God, our own President Trump, nothing I have not seen anything as to whether Mar-a-Lago was okay or any damage happened. But Father, <clears throat> I'd ask a great blessing upon our President Trump and Melania and the whole family. A blessing, Lord, from you. I come against fear, Lord. God has not given us a spirit of fear. It's Satan that wants to put a spirit of fear upon us. But you have given us power and love and a sound mind. Lord, let those who have been very upset this week, let them regain <clears throat> a sound mind. Let them be able to sleep, Lord. Let them be able to calm down and to make good decisions Holy Spirit, we're asking you to come and help any who are very upset. Help them, Lord, to make good decisions now. Father God, we are believing for great revival. Great revival in Israel, in America, in Russia, in China, all over the world. Every country, Lord, we're asking that a hunger and a thirst stir up the people to pray and to seek you and that revival will break out. Lord, bring many to Christ through the storm that America has endured. Great revival. We hold up our sister Janine and we ask, Lord, that you heal her back this pain that continually comes back. Heal her back, Lord. Heal her heart, Lord. Her heart still aches and hurts from losing her only son to death. Father God, let many neighbors <clears throat> and, and people at a church, Lord, show her where to go to have fellowship, to come with her prayers. Father God, we're asking that you bless this sister of ours. We're going to give you all the praise and all the glory. And all of God's people, cry a hearty amen and continue on with your own prayers and thanksgivings. God loves you. Jesus died just for you. You can have joy in him today, no matter what's going on in life or around you. Come to him. Sing a little song. <clears throat> Go join a congregation today. And sing away and pray away and enjoy what you have in him. All God's people, cry a hearty amen and went about a beautiful day. I love you all so much. Bye-bye.